Forbes magazine, available on the internet as well as in its normal hard copy. Okay, let me turn then to the updates for today. I want to begin by talking with you about restaurants that have closed. They have been one of the great victims of all of that has happened uh, from the pandemic and from the economic crash. I want to give you an idea just of a few of the chains that have either declared Chapter 11 uh, bankruptcy or have shut down. Chuck E. Cheese, Le Pain Quotidien, Vapiano, Bravo and Brio, the NPC Corporation, which is one of the largest franchiser of thousands of Pizza Hut and Wendy's restaurants across the United States. California Pizza Kitchen, where I learned an interesting statistic. At this pizza place, 80% of its business was dining in, which means they cannot survive, which is why they declared bankruptcy, from takeout. Even if takeout expands, they're not going to survive losing 80% of their business. Dunkin' Donuts has announced it's closing 800 stores uh, in the United States and another 350 abroad. McDonald's is closing all 200 stores that are mostly in Walmarts across the country. And this is catastrophe, and it affects restaurant workers who are among the lowest paid in our country. But the, the, the contagion from this is even worse. As these restaurants come back over the next year or two, if they do, many will not, they will be pressing their workers to work longer hours at lower pay in order to survive and make up for some of the losses they have already suffered. Benefit cuts, wage cuts, all of it. And this is going to cause not just pain for the workers affected, but the landlords in the buildings where these restaurants are located, they're not going to get their rent, and they're sure not going to get the rent they used to get. And the neighborhood businesses that counted on restaurant visitors for part of this, all of them are dealing with the fallout. This could have and should have been prepared for. Plans should have been in place to deal with either the pandemic causing this or the economic crash, let alone both together. But they weren't. And so these industries are suffering disproportionately. And as I'll show you later in the program, even as these folks suffer the most through absolutely no fault of their own, there are other players in today's economy that are doing really well. <coughs> and nothing in this capitalist system works out to have a community in which those who are doing well share with those who are suffering. Those doing well are doing well through no fault of their own, just like those who aren't. Then there is the coming tsunami, not my word, of eviction. Here's the problem. Many people have been unable to pay their rent or their mortgage payments for the last several months, April, May, June, July, and they probably won't pay in August either. And those are accumulating as debt. Now the courts have been closed and a number of governors and others have banned Actually, eviction open. proceedings in the courts, but those moratoria are drying up and the evictions are coming. Is there a plan in effect nope. in the nation that deals with this problem? No plan. No. Is there a program to help people through it? No. Only billionaires. That is a catastrophe about America, even before the pandemic and the crash hit. And to underscore it, I'm going to compare us with France. <coughs> not because Europe is wonderful and the United States isn't, and not because Europe doesn't have many problems. Well, it is actually. It, it is wonderful compared but to this is shithole of a country. Of where we can Trump has learn turned this into. And where Americans need to understand where they are relative to others. For decades in France, the following law has been on the books. No such law exists in the United States. Let's get one Think like it. Ready? You cannot evict the person. Ready? 
ever between November 1st and the end of March. And the reason in the law is clear. It's because it's cold outside. <laughs> and so it has been illegal for anyone to be evicted during the cold months of the year in France. End of story. <laughs> wow. Who fought for visionary. that war in France? The socialists did, and they got it, and nobody has dared touch it since. <laughs> Then Maybe the France. action of the socialist mayor of Paris, the capital of France. Her name is Anne Hidalgo, and she's quite famous. She announced there would be no eviction this year until October 31st. How cute. That's the day before the normal law kicks in on November 1st. In effect, the French will allow no evictions to even start until the end of March, 2021. Now that's a way to deal with the problem of eviction. That's smart. Nothing remotely like that exists in the United States. Then I did another comparison. France last year, 2019, had 16,000 evictions that actually happened. The United States over the same period last year, ready, had 1.5 million evictions. Wow. I did the arithmetic. The rate of eviction per person in this country is 23 times greater than the rate of eviction in France per person. Think about it. I do want to take my hat off to the governor of Oregon who has acted to prevent any eviction also until March of 2021. And there may be others, but of course it's haphazard. It depends on the politics of the state governor to state. and legislature in each state. It should be a national be program. Be a corrupt Republican. And that's a scandal. Yep. 